It's time to hear it from Harlan. Utah Director of Athletics, Mark Harlan, takes you behind the scenes with the Utes, the Pac-12 Conference, and Collegiate Athletics. Now, here's your host, Mike Legaschult. And coming up on the show, we'll look back at the first full month of the fall sports season and look to what's ahead on the horizon. Vanessa Ramirez of Volleyball drops by to join Mark for his one-on-one interview, and Mark gives us an update on Utah's Name, Image, and Lightness initiatives. Mark, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike. Always good to talk to you. we got a lot of fun stuff to uh, get everyone up to speed on. You know, September is one of those months where we get things rolling and there's a lot going on, but we've had a busy month with the Hall of Fame banquet that first weekend, and then last weekend, really a special event, Mark. It was the 50th anniversary event for Tile 9, 50 years four. We've been planning since back in April. Charmel Green's done a great job spearheading that group, a lot of conversations that turned out to be everything we thought would be and hoped it could be, and then some. And I know you were there, but Mark, to have that many former athletes, coaches, administrators, current athletes and administrators there at the Huntsman Center, almost 500 people were in attendance. Just a wonderful event we had here last Friday. Yeah, it's been a such a fun journey to celebrate 50 years of Title IX, specifically at the University of Utah. And Charmel Green, as you mentioned, our, our chief operating officer and deputy athletic director, has been leading the efforts. As a former student athlete here, uh, late 80s, early 90s, what a perfect person to lead the effort. But so many people have been involved, Mike, including you and other members on the committee, to to tell the stories, the incredible stories. And so we've been rolling those out. Hopefully a lot of our our, our followers have been, have been seeing those videos, just the unbelievable accomplishments and sometimes the struggles too, right. uh, to succeed. Kind of culminated really in our event, as you mentioned, uh, this last week, uh, you know, before the Oregon State game. It was, it, was a, it was one of the best events I've ever been to uh, since I've been involved in intercollegiate athletics. You know, it, they, I think Charmel particularly wanted me to not be too close to this. She wanted me to be like anyone else that was coming to really feel um, – you know, just the, the spirit and support that our incredible, um, you know, coaches and student athletes have done. So we had incredible speakers, as you mentioned, and, and just, just reminding us of the journey, you know, and things like fighting for, for any time uh, as they came up. By the time they got to Utah, a lot of them, Helene Elliott and examples and others, it, you know, things were where they, they were trending in the right direction, right? But things prior to them coming here, things like just fighting for a play day. Right. Like just working with a high school program to allow them to compete on Saturdays. I mean, it's remarkable. The best thing about the event, Mike, was that we had so many of our female student athletes in attendance. Right. Yep. And that's been one of the key follow-ups for me is the comments I've heard from them. They got a chance to do it. But we did have an unbelievable student athlete um, Maya Labar, who spoke on behalf of the current student athletes, and I think it's her words that uh, I really will take take for a long time. Yeah, she talked about how she's grown during her time on campus. Let's hear from Maya from last Friday. Over the course of the past almost five years here as a Utah student athlete, I've come to learn more about myself than at any other stage in my life thus far. From coming to understand my personal dreams and goals to walking through some gratitude invoking accomplishment. Utah has been the place for me. The University of Utah has provided me and led me to experiences and opportunities beyond even my wildest dreams. And for that, I am truly eternally grateful. Not only have I grown tremendously as an athlete at the highest level of competition, but as a young woman entering the world and interacting with a slice of adult life for the very first time. So again, Myla Barr brought us home last Friday. Elaine Elliott also spoke. Beth Lanier, our current volleyball coach. Joe Evans, former softball player and coach. Megan Marsden, the first lady of Utah Gymnastics. Just a wonderful program last Friday. It is. And, and again, uh, I'm glad that, that everyone got to listen just now. And if they were there, heard then the, the Maya's comments. And, you know, listen, as I, as I said at the event, we got more work to do. We have more things we need to be thoughtful about. At the end of the day at the University of Utah, our women's athletic programs in many respects have led the way. Yeah, they sure and have. And they have created the expectations of championship-level programming, both both on the courts and the fields and the pools, but also in the classroom. So uh, we will continue to follow their lead. And for those of you who could not be there, we had the video posted online. Go to our website, utahutes.com. There's a Tile 9 50 Years Forward logo at the top of the page on the homepage. Click on that. That will send you to a website that has our editorial content from our summer content series. Also, the, the anchor video that was so well done by Sarah Vermont to bring us home with the banquet. And also, the entire banquet is there. So check it out on utahutes.com. Well, Mark, as we turn the calendar to October, it's been a fun fall season football First and foremost, ranked 11th now. They come in 4-1 and one to this week. 2-0 to Pat 12. They're off to UCLA this Saturday in Pasadena. 
Yeah, football has just done a, an incredible job of getting better every week, which is what we all want of our student athletes uh, and their teams. And we certainly have seen that with the squad. I think we've we've seen um, both in in positions and and overall team performance. And you know now with these two first Pac-12 games behind us, now we we get into that part of our schedule where we know other teams have also gotten better week by week. So it starts off with UCLA. Uh, I know our fans will be there and support. They they always are, and we look forward to to going out there and and showing how far we've come. And then, of course, after that, we have the other school from L.A. and at home. And I was pleased that that will be a 6 p.m. kickoff. I think it's a great time for our fans to be there. And uh, and then after that, it keeps rolling. Our league is a lot better. Everyone sees it. I think as we tape this, we have five teams in the top 25. It's been consistent like that all year. Not surprised. I think we all saw this sign um, in the off season that we had a lot of student athletes coming in through the portal. We had a lot that stayed. It's uh, it's an exciting lead to compete on, and we know every week we got to be ready. And Mark, I know you and the staff have talked a lot about the fan experience at games. Last year we went to digital ticketing, that's worked out very well. But a lot of talk about how do you make the in-game experience better in terms of just more scans at the gates to get people in more quickly, and also the East Side Eats to get some food trucks back on the East Side. Mark, just talk about the strategic planning you and your staff have done to elevate our game day experience of football games. Yeah, well, we don't run from it. Our, our first game uh, was was not run well, and we always are going to learn from things that didn't go right. I will tell you our provider uh, that handles all that uh, had had close to 60% of their staff didn't show up. Yeah. Right. But that's one of our vendors. So we'll take responsibility for our vendors inability to have people where they were supposed to be. And the, the net effect was taking way too long to get into the stadium. After that game, there was some pretty significant meetings, uh, held by both our friends at auxiliary services who actually manage the stadium and my team. And we just said it can't happen. And so we decided to get on a grease board and do everything we could for the remainder of the season. And to your point, we have made improvements. The vendor has done a better job uh, getting people there, uh, getting people in the stadium, and, and of course, having the, the, the amount of ushers you need. We've made some changes in the concession stand. We moved everything out of the concourse that was not a direct concession. A lot of that has been moved in the south end zone concourse. So I urge people to go look at that. And then what you said more options. We did the food trucks last week in that East Alley area. That's helping with congestion. Uh, we put radio. You can now hear the voice of the Utes, yes. Bill Riley, uh, when you're waiting in line there. And also we've, we've got video screens now up. That was something that, that we've wanted to do for a while. We just pushed and got, got that done. So listen, it's, um, it, it's just something we're going to continue to work at. We're so honored that our fans come. We know sometimes it's a challenge. But we are working on it, and we're going to continue to work on it, and we'll be able to do a little bit more next year as well. I know they've had a record number of scans per minute the last two weeks, so improvements with our Well, we staff. appreciate, too, Mike, our fans coming in early. Yes. That, that yes. helps you know, both in terms of the team uh, being appreciating as they're warming up, but also it doesn't bring everybody in at the same time. So I think our fans really helped us in the last week uh, with getting folks in a little bit earlier. All right, so again, the next home game, USC, coming up October 15th, 6 p.m. on Fox, and – We'll see if we have a busy morning that week, Mark. Uh, some things in the works. We'll know more Sunday, and I'll leave it right there. How's that? That sounds good. No, <laughs> in, in, all, in all transparency, I mean, game day has certainly indicated to us that we're one of the sites they're looking at. A couple things have to happen, but to your point, as soon as we get the, uh, the call, if we do, uh, we will scream it to the mountaintops. Yeah, check out social on Sunday, and hopefully good news to pass along on game day visiting Salt Lake once again. All right, Mark, some other fall sports well into their season as well. Soccer 5, 4-2 and two overall, 1-2 and two in Pac-12 play, and they're back home this weekend to face Oregon Thursday, Oregon State Sunday at 1 o'clock. Yeah, it's been a it's been a great um, great you know start for soccer. It's been also a frustrating start for the, the program, and meaning that they have lost a couple games literally in in the in the last minute or two of the match i've never seen it happen as much to any soccer team i've been around and so i give hideki the staff and the students a lot of credit for you know what we're going to keep going i mean last thursday we're playing u dub for those that missed it and it's a late corner kick and i've never seen this now maybe i don't i need to watch more soccer but i've never seen Someone kicked the corner kick out of bounds, and it curved into the net. I mean, you've seen long kicks right. from the pitch, but not from – matter of fact, my first reaction <laughs> when I was watching it, I was like, is that legal? Did I that mean, does happen? someone have to touch the ball? That's how we lost that one. So, listen, it, it shows that we're really close. The next step is to, to close those, those games. We've got two home games, as you mentioned, this weekend. 
you know, it's such a great setting there at Ute Field. So, sure so appreciate everyone that could come out and, and continue to support our, our women's soccer team. Yeah, going back earlier, that Alabama down, a team that's ranked high. They almost had them take care of Oregon. BYU, 89th minute. Yes. We lost in the 80. I mean, it's just it's yeah. it's just tough and, yep. and it's just it's developing. Right. And and at the same time keeping them together and pushing forward. Yep. Good young team in year two for a ducky, our head coach. All right, volleyball, Mark. Nine and six overall, two and two in the Pac-12. You always love to go out west and take care of the LA schools. They got a split. They defeated UCLA and Pauly three to one. Lost USC last week, and they're back home as well this week in the face Cal and Stanford. And and the nine and six is a little deceiving. Beth really, uh, <laughs> you'd think in thirty three years she'd she'd like give herself a little bit of a break in the non conference schedule, right. but. She scheduled the New York Yankees and, and a few <laughs> others. So some of that, and, and some of those were on the road, right? So she's really battle-tested. The team is really battle-tested. So we'll see. I mean, I think it's, is, is, you know, we've seen we've had some incredible moments. It's a really young team. Um, but I have a feeling when it's all said and done, we're going to sneak into that tournament. Yeah, she she brings out the best in her team as the year progresses, and you're right, Beth, the veteran coach, uh, I think they've got a, a good chance to face strongly as the year progresses. All right, Mark, cross country two meets into their season. They won the University of Minnesota Invitational back on September 23rd. They go to Madison for the Mary Nuttycomb Invitational. That's a big national meet on Friday, and they host Utah Open on Thursday, October 20th at 11 a.m. at Sunnyside Park, and uh, they're off to a good start as well, Mark. Uh, Kyle's just been bringing it, and, yeah. and really, you know, this is now, I think, the third straight year we We've won a very prestigious cross country meet. Uh, the the one at University of Minnesota had a lot of top twenty uh, teams there, and to travel and to win is really impressive. So, been really impressed with the continual uh, improvement of our cross country team that is now nationally ranked. So, um, they're always running. They sure are. I see them on most mornings, and uh, they certainly got a lot of great meets ahead. But that one coming up at Sunnyside Park, you know, if people people look on the website, it's a fascinating thing to come down and watch right? And, and, and the effort that is put in. But the finish line is something else when they dive across or what yeah. have you. So anyone that's around to come out and support the team, we'd really be uh, appreciated if you guys could do that. And Mark, also men's golf, men's and women's tennis into their fall schedules. In fact, men's tennis hosts their second invitation of the fall on October 21st to 23rd. And Mark, it's October basketball already underway. Craig Smith entering year two and Lynn Roberts, her team coming off a trip to the NCAA second round a year ago. They are already in practice mode. Yeah, I mean, both programs are in the in the heat of it. You know, it's a lot of rule changes, so they had a lot of work leading into the first official day. But I've had the uh, opportunity to go to, to, to both sides uh, of the practice facility to see them compete and really impressed. You know, on the women's side, we brought a lot back, got some key transfers in there, some incomers as well and I look for another really special season on the women's side on the men's side wow I mean talk about just more athleticism size yeah. I mean Craig's practices are like going to a rock concert you know they're just people moving around and it's a fast moving deal so I'm excited about where they'll be from a competitive standpoint and again a schedule that it will challenge them as we head into on both the men and the women's side a very very competitive Pac-12 schedule. Okay, we talked about the volleyball team a moment ago. When we come back, the Pat 12's leader in digs from Volleyball Droids, Mark Vanessa Ramirez, drops by. That's next on the Hear It from Harlem podcast. For tickets, apparel, team schedules, and more on the youths, visit utahutes.com, the official website of Utah Athletics. Okay, it's that time again where we invite an incredible student athlete to join us. And we are so honored today to have Vanessa Ramirez from our outstanding volleyball team here today. And it's been really fun for me personally to watch uh, Vanessa grow in our program. But wow, what a start you've had to the year. Um, I'm going to brag about you a little bit because I know you're in a team sport and, and I get it. So I'm allowed to say, but you've just been spectacular. You know, you can see this coming on and you're freshman, sophomore, now your junior year, but you're one, one of the tops in the country in digs. You lead the world in pancakes, and we're going to talk about that okay. in, in just a minute. But really, you can tell, I mean, opposing teams are just trying to figure out a way not to hit it to you in that, in that back row and, and just off to, to an amazing start with a lot of games left to go this year. So let's first talk about you and your, your journey from the Pasadena area in Southern California to come to Utah. How did you wind up here? I really liked Utah. Um, once I went to like the high octane of volleyball, it felt like home for sure. It was really a family like, really nice culture. All the girls were really nice to me. And once I met Beth, it for sure, I got my attention. I really wanted to come here. Once I stepped to campus, I felt 
this was my second home for sure. Well, that's 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 fantastic. And and Beth, our thirty in her thirty yeah. third year, yep. uh, knows a little bit about finding incredible talent and and developing relationships. And and for years has brought just amazing young women uh, to our campus. So we know the the Pac twelve is just a special conference in a lot of different ways. And certainly, um, we see championships across our Olympic sports. And volleyball is is absolutely one of the top sports we sponsor. Um, so I wonder, you, you come into the Pac-12, you're obviously a very accomplished club and high school player. How was that jump for you? For me, it was a little struggle for sure. It was a little different. I started when it was my freshman year. I, for sure, there was, I was the only freshman playing. So it was a little struggle. I didn't know like the systems, the offense, nothing. It was it was COVID year too, so right. So it was it was a struggle for sure. Gosh, you know, I'm reminded now because a lot of our COVID freshmen, yeah. so to speak, are, are growing up on us mm-hmm. and 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 already in that junior and, and year. So you you really started to you, you could see yourself really coming on. It, I always ask this of our student athletes: When was your moment that you realized, "Whoa, I'm I'm a Pac-12 player, and I can, I can, I can really do this. Was that in your freshman year, or did it take your sophomore year? It was my freshman year, for sure. It was like a dream for me. I really wanted to come play at a Pac-12 school in high level. And once I started my first, I think it was against BYU. Mm. When I first started, it was just like, wow, this is my dream. My dream is coming true, for sure. Well, it's, uh, it, like I said, it's been amazing to watch. So let's, let's talk a little bit about... Um, pancakes okay right? and we're not talking about the morning pancakes we're talking about a specialty in volleyball that it's when it happens in a game it's it's you know it gets the crowd immediately on its feet because it follows usually a how fast do those spikes come by the way very fast very fast very very, very, fast. very, very fast so describe to our listeners the pancake of which you are okay. particularly good at so the pancake is like if you don't have time to have like both hands together and it's like a fastball, like a roll shot. There's like a way you just go with the pancake, put your hands out, extend your arms, your fingers um, open. It's just amazing, to be honest. It's So to me, though, it's that piece, but it's also you have this amazing ability to know exactly when to deploy that. Yeah. And as I said earlier, you know, you're, you're one of the tops in the country of this. You just had... Uh, 22 digs uh, at USC last Sunday. And by the way, um, that's again, tops in the conference. You lead the the conference in digs. So you, you've got these powerful hitters. Mm-hmm. Tell me how, how does it work when you realize, okay, I, cause you have a way to always be where the ball is, is what I'm getting at. So how, is that just from playing the game so long? You're always in the right spot. I think it's like playing for a very long time. And also like for me as a libero, to see like the hitters like arms how where they're swinging if they're all the way back and they're like roll shotting it like you go for it but for me it, I think it's like it's been a while since I've been playing the game I think I for sure know where they're gonna hit and all that does this also go into some of the film study preparation yes. so you just had the LA swing and I assume you guys look at a lot of tape of their hitters and so Is that a big part of, too, of just the work that you do going in the matches? Film is for sure a big, big deal. Like, watching where the hitters hit, like, you for sure know where they're going to hit, and you'll be there. So I think film is very important for watching. Yeah, I imagine. And, and of course, you know a lot of these girls, right? That's the other thing I'm always struck by, particularly the Olympic sports and all our sports. Everybody seems to know each other because you guys have all come up, especially the California uh, students, you all know each other. So you've been going against some of these yeah. folks for a while. So you kind of know what they, what they do. Well, it is remarkable. And I do, I know the BYU match didn't go our way. Um, it, it, it was just every single game came down to the end and they just, it didn't go our way, but it was interesting. Tom Homo, who was traveling uh, with the BYU volleyball team, he's the, he's my counterpart there. He, he grabbed me after and said, Vanessa, that's what he said. He goes, I don't think I've ever seen anyone defend our hitters. And so it was a real tribute to, to you. And, and obviously, um, we look forward to watching you the rest of the year. So let's, let's, let's get into a little bit more fun stuff about you. And I, we were talking about this when you, when you walk in. I find this story just incredible. And this goes to your family in the, in the Pasadena area. So talk a little bit about this incredible connection with the restaurant your family uh, runs and how it relates to Utah. 
So my family owns a restaurant called El Portal Restaurant. It started off with my grandpa, and then now it's owned by my dad. So once the football team went to the Rose Bowl, my dad wanted the band to be there, wanted to host the band. So we did host the band. It was a big deal for my dad. Like he really oh, wanted, awesome. really wanted Utah to go. And we were really excited to have them. They did a really good job. It was, it was just amazing for sure. Well, so f- for those of you in the area, say kind of generally where the restaurant is. It's in El Molino in Colorado in Pasadena. So anyone that's out there, and I, I and I do believe our football team plays out there uh, this week, and so anyone that has an opportunity, because this will be released before the game, to, to go to El Portal and, yes. and, and visit uh, your dad and your family member there. It's a legendary uh, restaurant, but I thought that was so neat that, that you guys fed the band, uh, the Utah family, and of course the volleyball team yes. uh, has gone through there when they do the LA Swing periodically, and mm-hmm. I think some of our other teams, if I've heard this right, so I just thought that was a really neat story. So let's switch now to academics, right? You're majoring in psychology. Yes. Why did you decide to, to go there? First, I started off with kinesiology, and I really thought that I really wanted to study kinesiology, but for me, it wasn't just a fit for me. So all my mom's side is all studying psychology. So I kind of wanted to try psychology. And I had a class in kinesiology was like sports psychology. Right. And I like really, really liked that class. So I told Mary Chris, is there any way I can switch my major to psychology? And she goes, yeah, for sure. So I switched psychology and I really, really love it. Like I love it. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. Mary Chris is our incredible uh, student athlete advisor. Normally, she'll give you that long stare about switching yeah. majors. I've seen it in the hallway <laughs> yeah. when I've walked by sometimes. But, uh, well, listen, what an incredible field that is, right? Yeah. I mean, as, as you've seen in your three years here, you know, what we try to do for support in that way, we're up to five full-time uh uh, mental health specialists and sports psychologists and all those kind of things. So mm-hmm. w- that would be an incredible thing for you to, when you're done with your volleyball career, whenever that might be, to go into that field with your background mm-hmm. as a student athlete and the unique pressures, right, of of competing at this level. So when are you going to wrap up academics? Do you think that's going to be um, in the next year or two? I think since I have my fifth year, I'm for sure going to stay my fifth year here. Yes. Is that breaking news? Are we breaking news? Uh, probably. We love to break news <laughs> on our podcast. So I am for sure going to stay in my fifth year, and I am spreading out my academics for sure. Good. Well, we appreciate everything you've, you've you. done. It's just been, like I said, such a such a joy to to watch the team. And and since I said we talk about the team, mm-hmm. uh, I'm not going to let you go without you talking a little bit about where you guys are now. We're kind of at the halfway, maybe close to the halfway point, just kind of starting the Pac-12 a couple weekends in. How do you feel like things are going? I for sure think this team is very special. For sure, we're a young team. Yep. But I think the freshmen that came in, they are really good. All the transfers that came in, we are a very special team. I say we for sure are kind of struggling right now, but we are pretty good team. We are young, but we're good. Well, I appreciate you acknowledging that because it really is. It's a lot of new faces. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, with Danny being such a six-year stalwart yeah. here, there was going to be a transition. But I agree with you. I mean, going to the games and, and watching, particularly our front line and them coming on, yeah. um, transfers have really come together really, really well. And it, and and a lot of the games that we've lost, they've been so close, They're right? So close. But there is one match I want to I want to bring up, and it, that is the sweep at Poly Pavilion yes. on uh, on. I think I've mentioned. I don't know if I said this publicly, so I have to be careful as I look over at our podcast director there. There's just a little special something beating the L.A. schools right now. So thank you very much <laughs> for sweeping the Bruins in uh, Poly Pavilion. Um, that's a special thing, as always, but particularly right now with all the things going on. So, Vanessa, continued success. Stay healthy and appreciate you joining us today. Thank you for having me. For more episodes of the Hear It From Harlan podcast, Search for it on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Alexa, Spotify, and YouTube. And welcome back. Please be joined by Vanessa Ramirez on our show today, Mark. And, you know, I, I go to quite a few matches as I broadcast the live streams, and you talked about her, her knack to get the pancakes in. She has about two or three per match, it seems like, that not only 
are big, but they change momentum or keep momentum for Utah. And, and she was just tremendous with you a few moments ago. Yeah, she, she's. I just love watching her play, and and you know, I, I I was excited that she was able to come by today. Um, just fierce, and okay, just remember, right? And she and I were trying to figure out how fast we settled on very fast. Those spikes come at you. Yeah. They're coming at you at, at I want to say, 100 miles an hour. And by the way, those girls are all about 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and they're coming straight down. Yeah. And so, first of all, there's just a, a measure of absolute lack of fear <laughs> to put your body in there. But that ability to and, – and, again, her digging is incredible, one of the best in the country at it. But that pancake thing is, is awesome. But I do want to say it's so fun to come to our volleyball games. They're exciting. The, the girls are great. We, we always have great – competition so come on down if you haven't come to a volleyball game watch Vanessa watch her teammates it's a real special team you know I was interested to hear about how she scouts teams with video and yep. you really prepares like a quarterback almost for matches we've gotten so advanced in that right yeah. video sharing used to be kind of a complicated thing and, and now it's easy this thing called the internet I believe <laughs> uh, has helped with that but they do and we didn't get into like if it's a lefty some teams are just got lefties and how that all works but it was interesting to hear that they spent a lot of time on that yeah. uh, coaches and of course the students uh, student athletes as well all right mark name image and lightness the conversation we've had almost every show you and i've done the last two years really some major upswing this fall across all of our sports with some deals for the football team other athletes and uh, just your thoughts on how this program's developed the last 14 months or so yeah, so we're really starting to cook. Um, we're, we're starting to see some real uh, results from uh, uh, just tremendous effort by a lot of folks, both internally and also uh, externally. And let's not forget, too, our student athletes who are figuring out their time demands, how much they can really jump into this space. And so as you and I tape today, we're about 1.6 million, and it's growing pretty regularly, of deals. Uh, cash, trade, what what have you. And the neat thing is it's spread across our department. Certainly we have a football and gymnastics type leading the way in our basketballs and those kind of things, but we're seeing it across all our sports. So the education that we put in place, the the partnership with, with the business school at the Lausanne Institute of how to manage and brand development and, and taxes and all those kind of things, but now we're really starting to see our community understand better. And I, I've said on this podcast, I believe, and certainly in other places, that a big responsibility that we have is to educate the community. We have a lot of donors that want to help, whether that's joining collectives. We've seen some collectives that have, have, have developed, but also those that have businesses that want to have our student-athletes. So we're starting to see some really good progress. You'll start to see more commercials with our student-athletes uh, beyond just maybe uh, uh, you know one of the, the well-known uh, you know, students that are here, but a broader base. We're seeing more team deals, which I think are just awesome, you know, spread across uh, that. So we're very grateful. I think we're just scratching the surface, though. Yeah. And I, I do like that number I gave you. As I compare it across the Pac-12 and others, particularly in the West, we're, we're actually near the top from what I understand. And, but we still can, can do more, and we will do more. We did some reorganization in the staff. Uh, Gavin Van Wagner now is our assistant athletic director for NIL. He also is a major gift officer. So using those skill set, uh, we've got Jeff Rudy, who's also a key part of this. Our compliance shop has people specialized in this. So we're making the necessary changes to make sure this is just an incredible opportunity for our student athletes. You know, Gavin shared with our staff this past week about a new show coming up on Channel 2 on Sunday nights. It's called Talking Utes. We'll have athletes on every week talking about various things, more behind the scenes, human interest stories that will give us some NIL opportunities and the plans to start with football, roll into gymnastics and basketball. It could be basically a show from Labor Day till uh, you know March, April. And uh, to have David James and that crew involved, that's a major coup for our department to get that show. Well, I appreciate them as a partner doing it. And I, it's been interesting in this NIL space to see the media opportunities. You know, we've always been cognizant when we work through our communication team about media availabilities. We never want to overdo uh, time demands for the students, but it's been interesting and actually really cool to watch these kind of paid uh, appearances. We see a lot on the, the, the all sports radio stations in town. And now you just mentioned another example, which will be you know more visual, obviously, because right. David's got it. It's more insight into our program and a more understanding of the kind of great young people we have around here. So it's been really, really good. And I, like, look at Brant Keithy. L last week, you know, he has a horrible injury. And it breaks my heart at the ASU game. But, you know, he's got a weekly hit, as we say in the business. And he was able to really articulate 
you know, what he was feeling and what was up ahead. And it was, it was just so well done by, by Brandon and also Bill. But, you know, we probably wouldn't have had him available for media after an injury. Matter of fact, we don't. We want right. our students to kind of do what they need to do. And I thought it was incredibly insightful. And I got a lot of people that heard it that made a comment about, gosh, you know, it broke your heart. But you also got to hear his personality. So, I don't know. There's so many great things about NIL. The last thing I'll say we still have to push nationally for standards, right? I mean, it's, it is kind of crazy that some schools can do this and some schools can't based on the states that they're in. You know, there has been some progress as it relates to, to federal legislation. There's a new draft out that's interesting. You know, I don't know what will happen in the midterms. Anything will happen afterwards. But, but right now at Utah, we're, we're doing everything we can for our students. Excited to see the growth, and you're right. There's so many stories out there with our student-athletes. They just need a platform to tell those, and this deal has allowed them to be paid for their time, and that's been wonderful so far. Uh, Cam Bryce has got a weekly deal as well, and we'll see more athletes get involved in that as we move our way through the academics and athletics season. Well, Mark Lasho, you and I spent a lot of time on the Pat 12 Conference and media rights, and you know, is the league going to stay on stand Pat at 10, expand? Uh, nothing official has been announced in recent weeks, but just anything you can share with our audience on the Pat 12 and what might be coming in the next few weeks. Does this have anything to do with playing UCLA in football this week? Well, it, it might just a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> no, it, it's 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 uh, you know, listen. Since the end of June, um, you know, there's been tremendous amount of work. Obviously, the the school, the, those two schools, deciding to, to to leave the conference. You know, right on the I don't know the eve of of negotiations. Uh, that was a tough time, and we've talked about it before. Uh, there, there was a lot of a lot of introspection and all of that. Well, all of that is now gone. You know, here we are in October, and I've been really impressed with the leadership of Commissioner Klyovkov, along with our presidents and chancellors, who have been very, very focused, working with the athletic directors to to move our opportunities in this media negotiation phase. I mean, it's obviously it is the number one source of revenue uh, for University of Utah to run our athletic program. So it's critical. And so I would just say, you know, we have been in very good conversation with our incumbent partners. And as we go forward in decisions there uh, further as necessary, I have been continually amazed of the, the, the erroneous reporting on this subject um, and I'll just say that to our fans that, that, that want to know more, we're in a good spot. I feel like we're very tethered um, and that we will land a deal that will be better than what most people think and will allow us here at the University of Utah to continue you know, our rise. Last thing on this, don't underestimate the importance of the CFP changes that were announced, you know, having a 12 team playoff is a different calculus now. You know, you, you, you're thinking now, you want to get your programs into the CFP. And Mike, I will say in the mocks I've seen, Utah would have been in the playoff two of the last three years. The only year would have been the COVID year. Yeah. And so if you happen to be a school in our conference that might think that the grass is greener, it's a new, it's a new different calculus. You know, you got to think, well, what's the path and, and to get there. So I think that's helped settle a lot of things down internally. I can say that it has. Um, so we're just continuing to march forward together. I do think things are going to get faster from this point on. And uh, I, I promise everybody when we have news, we're going to share it, but I feel comfortable with where we're at. As you said, a lot more coming in the next few weeks. You're right. George Klavkov gave us some pretty good numbers in a podcast with John Gazzano and John Wilner a few weeks ago about breaking down a potential move to say the big 10 that it might not be the best move for some schools. And I thought he gave some great, some great numbers and some great uh, insight on that podcast a few weeks back. Yeah, it's, it was interesting. And, 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 you know, George went public with some things, which I thought was helpful for people to understand. Listen, every school has to make their decision in their best interest. We certainly have seen, yeah, <laughs> seen that right. happen in the last two <laughs> years in two significant conferences, but there are always the spreadsheets that you got to look at. And, you know, now that you kind of know what the big 10 has and you know what the SEC has and, you know, and, and you know what it takes to run your programs and travel costs. I mean, all that data is not too hard. So to his point, uh, there's a lot of reasons to stay. But another reason to stay is the progress we're making as we try to finish up this deal. All right, Mark, we'll talk more on our next show, probably in November. And as always, appreciate the time. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you. All right. That's Mark Carlin. I'm Mike Lagashow. Thanks to Vanessa Ramirez for joining us. Also, thanks to Matt Sanchez for his technical assistance. Until next time, so long, everybody. This has been the Hear It From Harlan podcast. Subscribe and listen all year long as we keep you up to date on the Utes, the Pac-12 Conference, and collegiate athletics.